I tend to be a pretty high energy person. If I'm way excited about something, I I can get to be too much for some people. I know this. I know this, right? But I can also control it when I need to. I want to show you a picture. Let me see if I can make the whole tech work. I want to show you the picture. So never mind that I'm kind of a dork in the picture. It's not a great picture of me. But I want to show you this picture because it's of me holding an owl right? That has basically fallen asleep in my arms. And so I'm pretending to also be asleep. We were playing around. But here's the thing. I've been working with this owl for a couple of months now. I've been able to hold her comfortably for several weeks. And this past week was the first time I took her out of her enclosure and hooked her up to her equipment by myself, took her out of the hidey hole box that she likes to stay in, hooked her up to her leash and her dresses and all of her stuff and brought her out of her enclosure. And I had to be really calm and very confident and honestly, very inviting because this is basically a predator, right? Like forget how freaking cute she is. This is a highly developed killer. This is not a domestic animal. And I, when I work with her, I have to be patient. First of all, she is at the center because of a problem that she has. She has a balance issue. So she's already not thrilled. And I have to be patient and make sure she's comfortable with what I'm doing in order to coax her and yes, often bribe her into engaging with me. I can lose her trust very easily by moving in ways that make her nervous, by making her feel unsettled. And that's what we call it where I volunteer. We call it a trust bank. And we're all very aware of what is our balance in the trust bank that we have with the different birds. And when I used to work with dogs, it wasn't terribly dissimilar. I used to volunteer at dog rescues and you, I still had to manage my energy. I had to be calm and I had to be confident. And with the dogs, it was a little different because they're a domestic animal. So you also had to exhibit strong leadership so that they would follow as opposed to patient inviting that I need for the raptors that I work with. Now, think dogs versus cats, right? That should explain it. Think dogs versus cats. But the underlying foundation is the same. Calm, confident, trustworthy, solid. And I used to teach a class at the dog rescue where I volunteered for all the other volunteers about how to train dogs. And one of the basic lessons that we taught was helping these volunteers understand that dogs speak body language. Dogs don't speak words, they speak body language. And because they're domesticated, most dogs speak human body language very, very well. And that's not just how they communicate with each other, they're watching us and they're interpreting our body language. And the thing that they don't like is what I used to call uncontrolled flailing. It's basically the dog language version of not making any sense. Arms waving, bodies jerking. They just don't know what you're trying to say when you're making so many random movements. And in a high stressful environment, as are most dog rescues, the end result is that they become untrusting of you. You know, your own dog will become accustomed to you and give you a break. But in the shelter, flaily body language makes the dogs like just not trust you. Your audience for your business is not terribly different. It's not terribly different. Does the energy that you have when you go to market display calm, confident, trustworthiness? Or are you flailing around so much that people don't understand what you're telling them? Are you a bit all over the place so that people's minds just kind of back away slowly and subconsciously they label you as untrustworthy? Now, I'm not saying you have to be all Zen like with me and the owl. I'm not Zen. I started off the video by telling you I'm a high energy person. But there's a big difference between high energy 
and the frantic feeling that we get some some from some folks who are throwing everything at the wall as fast as they can to see what sticks or jumping from thing to thing to thing so fast that you almost lose track of what it is that they were trying to do in the first place. And I always felt honored to have a shelter dog that I don't have a relationship with. Trust me enough to do training sessions with me, not just let me walk him and feed him, but do actual training sessions with me. And I will tell you, having an owl fall asleep in my arms is that same gift on a completely different level. So think about how that might feel in your business. If you were to see your prospects, your clients, your audience in these same light, as gifting you with their attention, gifting you with their trust? And what if you understood how to communicate with them in a way that built the trust needed for them to take the next steps with you? What would that even look like? Because even with my high energy self, I can tell you that calm, confident and inviting and running my business from a place of calm, confident and inviting sounds way better and way less stressful than running my business and trying to grow my audience and make things happen, make things happen, right? By chasing and convincing anyone. So because I love her so much, I want to end up showing you, forget the dorky picture of me. What would that energy do for your business?